Hello everyone, so let's continue with the end-to-end -end example. So far what we have done is we have done steps 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and also 6. So we just created a file with all the behavior definitions, the create, update and so on. Now what we have to do is we have to implement the behavior definitions. Now if I go back here, um, I had mentioned that uh, one root entity, the business object in our case, UX team, has one behavior definition file. Uh, but when we have to uh, implement it, uh, we can implement it in multiple files. Uh, so if you want to buy the house, sell the house, you can implement that part of the logic in a different uh, file if you want. Uh, but in our case, since it's a very simple use case, what we will do is we will uh, uh, implement all of these functionality in the same file. So in the implementation, what we need to do is we need to provide step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to perform the behaviors. Now, the create, update, and delete, uh, they are automatically implemented in a managed scenario. And a managed scenario is what you would use when you build a new application. Uh, so these uh, functions are automatically uh, implemented. Uh, but all of these determination, action, and validation, uh, this is something that you have to write custom logic. Um, now to write this custom logic, uh, we have to use EML, the Entity Manipulation Language. And this Entity Manipulation Language can be directly consumed inside of ABAP. Uh, and it provides type safe read and modifying access to data. Uh, you will see that uh, in documentation it says type safe. Uh, and I don't, I haven't seen any, I don't know if there is a word that uh, uh, that is type safe. Um, and it's probably used everywhere, type safe. Uh, but I don't know of uh, what that means. Uh, so I'm using the word type safe. Uh, anyways, uh, this EML uh, has three main statements, uh, and that's all you need to know. Um, so in the uh, the one of the the first statement is modify, uh, and here this is the syntax, uh, and then the read, and then the commit. Uh, so these are the three statements in the entity manipulation language, and this can be in, used uh, inside directly inside of ABAP. Now this is the short form of modify. There is a longer form of modify as well. Uh, now uh, the main thing to remember here is I'm not going to go into the details, but just the main thing is um, when you do modify. So modify. Uh, covers create, update, and delete. Uh, so the, uh, this statement uh, creates uh, uh, covers uh, create, update, and delete. Now, if this is successful, uh, this uh, structure failed is going to be empty. But if it fails, what you want to do is uh, this structure is going to be filled with something. Uh, and then this reported uh, can have additional information. And the map will have the result here as well, uh, other result here. Uh, same thing with the read. If the failed structure has is not empty, uh, that means the read failed. Uh, and so, well, with commit, it's a little different. Uh, so check for size sub RC in this case. Um, but in every other case, in read and modify, uh, if failed, if the structure is empty, then it is successful. And that's what we will use to go ahead and implement our logic, of uh, the custom logic for these uh, actions. Uh, so I'm going into Eclipse ADT tools. Um, so what I want to do is now I want to define the behavior. Now you can see that uh, the tool, the tooling, uh, has already flagged this uh, with a uh, with a squiggly line under this because we don't have this class yet, uh, and it also makes it easy for us to implement this class. So I can uh, click on this button here and then say create behavior implementation. So this will create us the file and all the good stuff. Uh, it will also have uh, placeholders for all these methods, the action, determination, validation, and so on. But it's up to you to create the, uh, the logic inside of it. Uh, so let me go ahead and create this behavior implementation file. Uh, so the file does get created. And now we'll go ahead and add some custom logic to it. Uh, so we have the file here. So let's start with the, the easiest one, the validate age. Uh, so in our uh, requirement, uh, when we add a UX team member, uh, we want to do some validation. And what we want to check is if the user is less than, uh, if the user must be um, 
the age of the user must be more than 21. Uh, so I have a code snippet for it. Uh, so let me go ahead and uh, enter the code snippet and I will explain what it does. And this is 5551 and let me go ahead and save it. Okay, um, so we are using the the longer form. Like I said, the, the EML, uh, there are three statements. Uh, and what I showed you on the slide is the smaller, the shorter version of it. Uh, we are using the longer version of it here. Uh, so we are actually reading entities. Uh, now what this allows us to do is um, it allows us to use the alias name. Um, OK, so we are reading the age. And then here, uh, like I said, we can use this EML statements inside of ABAP. Uh, so here you see ABAP code direct, and you see EML, so which is directly inside of this ABAP code. Uh, once we read the age of the the user, uh, we loop through that members. Uh, I guess we could have just read the entity, but we have read. Uh, so this is uh, uh, we're looping through these. Um, um, the members and if the age is less than 21 uh, what we do is uh, we add to this failed structure uh, because we add to this failed structure uh, it does not continue anymore uh, so the save is aborted uh, and uh, basically a very simple use case uh, just to illustrate how we do these actions uh, so just add to this fail stream uh, one other thing that I do want to mention is you want to use this percent TKY. Now there is also percent key that you can use. Uh, now the advantage of using percent TKY is uh, in case you do implement draft, uh, then you don't have to change your code. So uh, this allows you to read from both the main table and also from the draft table. Uh, so it is always recommended to use uh, percent TKY even if you don't implement draft. Uh, so just go ahead and use uh, percent TKY uh, and that should and if you do implement draft, then you don't have to change your code. Uh, OK, so very simple logic. Uh, we just read, and if the member's age is less than 21, uh, we append to this failed structure, and then this aborts the save sequence. Uh, and we can save it, and we can uh, activate this as well. Um, so, so activation went fine. Uh, next thing what we'll do is we'll add code to the change salary. Uh, so like I mentioned before, uh, the salary field itself is read only. Uh, the only way you can change salary is if you change the role. Uh, so we'll have some logic for this. Uh, so let me go ahead and add this logic here as well. Um, and pretty straightforward logic. Uh, and I'll let me explain what I have done. But before that, let me change these uh, numbers to 5551, 5551, and 5551. OK, I think that looks good. OK, so here uh, I read all the members uh, pretty much the same as uh, here, where I read all the age. Uh, now, the um, with the members, I loop through the members. And what I do is, if the role of that member is UX developer, uh, then I use the modify. Uh, so here is uh, where I use the modify statement. So here I use the EML read statement. And here I'm using the EML modify statement. Uh, again, there are three EML statements that you need to be aware of, uh, read, modify, and commit. OK, so if the role is UX developer, uh, then I put the salary as uh, 7,000. Again, notice that I'm using percent %TKY. Uh, always use percent %TKY. Uh, and then uh, if the role is UX lead, uh, then I put the value as 9,000. Uh, so pretty straightforward. And this gets called automatically. This method gets called automatically whenever the role is changed. So whenever the role is changed, uh, this method gets called. And uh, you can have elaborate logic here. Uh, but for our use case, uh, simple use case, so we understand what is going on, uh, this should suffice. 
Uh, the next thing is set active. Uh, so when a user is initially, when you insert a user for the first time, when you create a user for the first time, the active flag for that user is set to false. Uh, then you can have a whole bunch of background logic. Uh, so you can have uh, whether the user is onboarded, whether his account is set up. And then once you do all that, then you can set this user as active. Uh, so I have another code snippet for that, which I will go ahead and add here as well. Um, now here, uh, let me go ahead and save it, uh, and I'll change this number to 15551 here as well. Again, straightforward. Uh, so I have commented out some custom logic that you can do. You can check if this background check is complete for this user. Uh, you can see if uh, all the references check out, uh, whether the account for, uh, account is set up for the new user, whether the laptop is procured, and so on. And then we do this modify uh, entities, the longer version of it, uh, of the modify statement. Uh, again, percent %dky is what I'm using. Uh, and you see there's the failed and the reported. Um, and what we do is, uh, if all of these check out, uh, these custom logics check out, if they are all true, if they all passed, uh, then what we do is, uh, for this active field, I set, the, I set it to op up true. Uh, so fairly straightforward. And once we set it to true, I also do a read and then set it as the result. Uh, so fairly straightforward um, as far as logic is concerned. Uh, again, like I said, the EML statements can be directly used inside of uh, ABAP. OK, so one other feature I do want to use is once the user is set active, uh, we don't want, we want to disable that uh, set active uh, button. Uh, there's no point in calling set active once the user is already active. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, have another piece of code for that. And this will, what it will do is uh, it will make sure that the active flag is disabled for users who are already active. Now, all these code snippets, I will be posting it in GitHub, uh, so you will have access to all this code. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm going through these uh, users, and if the user is active, if the member is already active uh, in this line we are checking, uh, then we set it to disabled, otherwise it is enabled. And you will, and I think if you've seen the uh, preview of the app, you will notice that when the user is active, uh, then the set active flag is uh, disabled. Okay, I think we are good at this time, so I will save this, and I should activate this without any error message. Okay, so the object is activated, and if I go here, uh, you, perhaps if I activate uh, this also, uh, you'll see that the squiggly line is gone. Um, so we have completed, um, let us me go back here. And we have completed step seven. Uh, so in the next session, we will do the behavior projections. Um, so we have right now implemented all the behavior definitions. Thank you.